Boys, bear with me today. I, uh, I'm on one. But I think we all are, right? Have you played Crucible here lately? Are you feeling satisfied? Today, guys, this is gonna be almost a psychoanalysis of what we find enjoyable in a video game on top of analyzing what has happened to make us feel as unrewarded as we feel when we play the Crucible play mode. Now, I know everyone says, hey, listen, Destiny is more PvE-focused than PvP. And you can go about your way and, and say that. Worked out for Anthem. I'm not saying that this game needs PvP, but if you wanted to cut PvP from Destiny, say goodbye to a very large portion of your player base. And as a PvP player and a PvE player, I respect both sides of the spectrum, and I understand that it is required to have both in order to make Destiny a game that stands out above many others. And that's the thing about many other games. They just don't do it right. They may nail the PvE aspect, but absolutely destroy the PvP aspect, or vice versa. And even though those games may be categorized as success, in their own terms. Destiny has always been there to set the bar and we as a community have seen that time after time and that is what we expect. Now what is it that makes a game enjoyable? What is it about a game that makes us say hey I'm gonna play that tomorrow, the next day, and the next day and before you know it you are a full-fledged member of that community. First up for me and I think for many other people it starts with player experience. How enjoyable is the gameplay? How does that weapon feel the first time you shoot it? And it's almost as if every gaming experience a great gaming experience redefines itself every time we picked up a new, better game. First time I played Skyrim. The first time I threw an axe in God of War. The first time I scaled a tower in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Every single one of those player experiences was the hook that dug into me at the very initial start that made my subconscious come alive and say this. This is the power fantasy or an element that I have been missing in my library of player experiences. Destiny did that for us. I think many of us that shot a hand cannon for the first time felt that way. D2, I don't know if it necessarily did that at first. Now the gunplay was still pretty sound, but there was too many aspects that was taken away from Destiny from the beginning. The player experience initially was thrown off in year one of Destiny 2 for a lot of people, from movement to time to kill, but the driving nail that made Destiny 2 a miserable experience in year one one was actually loot incentive. So that is actually the two biggest driving factors for Destiny. That's what makes a player experience inside of Destiny so rewarding. It's not only is the player experience such a good one, where you actually see the benefits of your hard work. You see yourself improving. On top of seeing yourself improving, the overall player experience is just fun. And that's something that is very noticeable in something like Crucible, or was. And the cherry on top is just loot incentive, which is the whole reason why I don't play Halo as much as I used to. Halo was my everything, right? Player experience was phenomenal, but there was no loot incentive. Somewhere along the way, there was a dopamine kick that got released when I saw that yellow orb on the ground. Turned out to be an exotic and the first time I picked one up a rush of dopamine hit my dick and my god I was off to the races boys oh and since then I've been seeking that high and I think we kind of get that right even if it's an exotic quest you get that high that loot incentive high has been satisfied multiple times in Destiny 2's life but here recently if you are just a crucible player that loot incentive that thing that driving force that can actually make you wade through a shitty player experience is all but gone which is the situation that we've run into we're now in a situation where, hey, not only is the player experience not that fun, if just outright miserable due to many factors that we're about to get into, but loot incentive. Oh, what the hell even is that? Can you get enhancement prisms inside of Crucible? No. What do you get for maxing out your valor? Nothing. You get a piece of armor. Woo! On top of what? Seven or ten enhancement cores? Bungie literally drew a line and said, hey, anyone that wants to chase in-game or pinnacle activities or build craft, you can't do it inside of PvP. Oh no. You better load up into that Nightfall ordeal and and get ready to run it a hundred freaking times. And it blows my mind because the other side of the spectrum are PvE players that have to go in and do a quest inside of PvP and get like 10 hand cannon kills. 10 hand cannon kills for an exotic quest and PvE players absolutely lose their mind. But what about PvP players who can't even obtain basic in-game materials inside of PvP? And what's so crazy about all of this is that Trials is rumored to be right around the corner. And the rumors are pretty obvious, guys. I really think Trials is coming back. I mean, we've already seen menus of trials that are hidden in the game that would not be active unless trials is well on its way so many of us are speculating trials to be back maybe sometimes in the spring the build up to that point though if trials was to be returning right now is so piss poor that by the time trials releases 
I don't know how many PvP players are necessarily going to be engaged enough to give it a go. Trials being the in-game pinnacle activity that does benefit you if you have high light, that does benefit you if you have your build completely finalized and tucked in. All of those things requiring in-game materials cannot even be earned by the average PvP player. So as much as I agree with PvE players, as I want you to have a good player experience, and if Crucible is ruining that for you, I don't necessarily want you to have to go inside of Crucible to get weapon kills to satisfy a quest. Therefore, on the other end of the spectrum, I wouldn't expect or want a PvP dedicated player to have to do nightfall ordeals over and over again. As satisfying as that may be to me, I enjoy speedrunning those nightfall ordeals. To those PvP dedicated players, it is not a satisfying player experience. Just like getting 10 hand cannon kills inside of Crucible, it's not a satisfying player experience for my PvE dedicated players. Loot incentive, though, really began to die out when the announcement of pinnacles were killed off. We have ritual weapons now. And let's just be real, ritual weapons are watered down pinnacles. You want to know what single-handedly saved Crucible in year two Forsaken? It wasn't just the sandbox changes, no. It was this beautiful weapon called Luna's How and Not Forgotten. That single loot incentive, just two weapons, saved the loot incentive in all of year two. So going into year three, we didn't necessarily have to rethink the will here, we just had to recreate something similar to those two weapons but maybe with a twist for the sake of balance maybe the pinnacles from crucible for year three what if we would have made them exotics would that have satisfied some people i mean let's be real you want to rock that last word or that favorite exotic of yours you're gonna have to sit there and really scratch your head and decide whether or not you want to use that pinnacle over those exotics another suggestion was actually to lock pinnacles to the comp playlist now i'm not a believer in that but let's be real what is the real reason why pinnacles were held off what was the real reason why pinnacle weapons were utterly destroyed and replaced by rituals they require too much you think a pinnacle weapon is something easy to think of bro we've been around the innovation table pinnacles are not easy luna's how with magnificent how was a very unique perk even mountaintop with its micro missile another very unique perk it behaved completely different than other grenade launchers and you had to dedicate someone to developing that that's not something that you just stumble upon not only that i think pinnacles just did not agree with the new monetization model why will we spend all this labor and time and hours into creating this extremely unique weapon when we could just turn around create that same weapon put it in an exotic quest and sell it as part of the season oh boy i know it as across you son of a bitch but it is hard right it's hard to think of those weapons not only is it hard to think of those weapons it's hard to balance them in a way outside of just outright making them exotics but at that point if we're going to be selling season by season separately wouldn't it be better to just throw that weapon in as part of an exotic quest or even on the season pass so loot incentive is still there i mean it's actually there it's just been shifted it's been shifted in a way that is not satisfying but that's not even all of it that's only one piece of the equation the other piece is just outright player experience outright player experience has been diminishing greatly since shadow keep has launched a couple reasons for that number one artifact mods let's just be real they do bring some elements of the game that is unpredictable and on some levels they do break it not only are artifact mods present in 6v6 which i'm actually okay with i can live with it being in 6v6 but it's also present in comp now to us we say whoa bungee that's broken right you just literally said you're taking pinnacles out for a reason but to them they say hey listen artifact mods are present to everyone fair game right if you can break it i can break it cool but i think the other biggest contributing factor to a diminishing player experience is number one, splitting the 6v6 playlists into two. And number two, adding skill-based matchmaking to at least one of those playlists. And this is what happens. In a very flourishing DLC or expansion like Shadowkeep or Forsaken, the population is at an all-time high. It's beautiful. You've got both of those playlists, despite it being split, completely full of people. And in terms of skill sets, the spectrum is also completely full. You've got low skill players, you've got high skill players, and everything in between. But then, as loot incentive, such as pinnacles, are removed, and once everyone understands that and knows that and realizes this linear fusion rifle, it's really not that good. It's all right. But come on, let's be real. Komodo, in comparison to previous pinnacles, is absolute dog shit. It's the point of me playing Crucible. And once that starts to set in, that player base begins to deal, which is when we start to run into some serious issues. Now you got a diminishing player base inside of PvP, 
split amongst two different playlists. See, it wasn't that big of an issue last summer, even in the dips between seasons. Take Season of the Drifter, for instance, because you only had one 6v6 playlist. The spectrum was still full. And we're not even getting into skill-based matchmaking just yet, but just know that skill-based matchmaking is actually okay to an extent, as long as the player population is full as much as you can possibly get it. So now you got people that sit there and they go back and forth between these two different playlists. Control, classic, control, classic, control, classic again. And what's happened in the past, or at least when Shadow keep launches they might have a bad gaming experience inside of control because of skill-based matchmaking but maybe if they swap to classic it's a little better because that's supposed to be connection based but in the situation that we're faced in in january of 2020 every time you swap to either one of those playlists oh boy the player experience is pretty ass and both of those everybody's sweating which then creates a vacuum if they're sweating i'm sweating and if i gotta sweat i gotta use things that give me the win i gotta use that last word that mountaintop that lord of wolves then all of a sudden everyone's in a race to get the nastiest loadout possible i got folks going invisible carrying the Lord of Wolves around. I got people sitting in the back of their mouth with aggressive snipers and empowering rifts. And listen, maybe that's the way the game needs to be played. Maybe that's what Bungie's saying. Hey, if you want to win in most of your engagements, you got to find the nastiest of the nastiest loadouts in order to pull off that win. Now, there was a place where that mentality was accepted and allowed. That was called Trials. And everywhere else, to us at least, or at least to myself, was an environment where I could try different things. If I want to use an auto rifle, go right ahead. If I want to rock hard night for a few games, games by all means get crazy and i wasn't met with the meta over and over again but we did run into that point eventually and that was of course year three of destiny one and we had the same common denominators back then as we do now lack of loot incentive because destiny 2 was well on its way why would bungie invest inside of destiny one and overall player experience had diminished to a point that player population inside of crucible was at an all-time low once you understand that both of those factors are needed in order to give people the gaming experience that they don't even know that they want then everything else becomes super simple now the things that we didn't get into today the things that do ruin player experience are weapons that have no counter cheaters especially ddosers or even just aimbotters to me it almost goes a little deeper sandbox changes Sandbox changes that walk the line too much, that sit between the balance of two different platforms that play very differently, console and PC. You see, Bungie is full of intelligent people, whether you want to believe it or not. Some people always jump up and say, ah, Bungie are idiots, ah, they don't know what they're doing. For them to even find a sandbox update quarter after quarter that somehow is walking this fine line between both of those platforms, I gotta say, I'm impressed. They've kept up this circus act now for well over two, three years, but the gig's up, man. It really is. If Trials is really on the horizon, you cannot introduce sandbox updates that walk the line. It's got to be dedicated to one or the other. And at some point, Bungie's going to have to be faced with splitting sandbox teams between both of those platforms. Now, I'm sure Bungie's looking at it this way. Hey, got new consoles coming out. In terms of specs, overall gaming experience, Destiny 2 or Destiny 3 at that time, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be pretty much the same experience between both of those, right? Therefore, these single sandbox changes that we keep making and walking this fine line is gonna do is just fine in the future on top of that it saves money guys remember that you're gonna have two different sandbox teams oh boy now you gotta spend more money and if Bungie was actually going broke I would agree with the sentiment but they're not they were the top grossing game on Steam since they joined them in October and they've remained one of the top grossing games if not the top grossing game overall Bungie's making money and that's good Bungie is making money and you want them to make money because you want them to reinvest that money back in the game January 6th guys the year is barely started this time last year Bungie announced that they were splitting from Activision it was a great move it was a big move i think it was one that we all endorse but that was last year this year we cannot ride the high of independence any longer this year i think many of us expect everything from loot incentive to player experience to be where it should be and by the way trials won't fix these issues you know a lot of people just say hey man just wait for trials it's gonna fix this no problem trials only makes these issues worse even the little loot incentive that trials may present will be far outweighed if the player experience overall is terrible which is why over the next few days i'll I'll be getting a video together of the things that are broken the things that are really making the player experience terrible now nobody likes to hear that right nobody wants to hear about their favorite meta weapon being nerfed but this is the vacuum that's created the player experience that you are experiencing right now is exactly the player experience you will experience if trials was to return today and i need you to really self-reflect and ask yourself are you enjoying the pvp experience right now and if you are man i guess it's just us i guess it's just me but i don't think you are i don't think you are as much as you think you are well, Guys, let me know in the comments below what you think. I highly advise that we keep things civilized. That just makes everything better. And I also want to outline 
how important it is that Bungie does listen to their player base. But as the player base, we are receptive to the innovation that Bungie tries to push forward and always give everything a fair shake. But the problems that we just outlined in today's video have not been problems that arose just last month. These issues have been ongoing. And I would say the launch of Shadowkeep amplified those issues even more. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, peace.